Good morning. It's been a while since I haven't made a video, but here I am today. I wanted to make a video about uh, plants. And today I'm going to plant some strawberries. And I'm going to take you along on how I plant my strawberries. Mm, this is the second year that I've planted strawberries and um, I think I'm switching my gardening to container gardening only. Um, if you watch any of my videos, you can see that I made an in-ground bed. There's a the video right there. And, um, and I did a couple of rows this past winter season in ground. So I tilled the ground, I made a hole, and then I filled it up with with compost and soil and everything and and the plants grew okay but it's just the soil that we have is clay soil and especially in the summer it absorbs it, it, it robs the soil the good soil that I put in from the water so the plants dry quicker okay so I changed to container gardening and I can control the soil. I can control the moisture that way. And it keeps the rabbits from eating my stuff because the rabbits were eating all the stuff that was on the ground, growing on the ground. So let me take you and show you the strawberries I already have growing in the containers. Okay, so here, nothing's really organized. You know, everything's all over the yard, but the plants are in the containers. And these are three uh no they are these three gallon or i think so i don't know but um they're strawberries and i made the self-watering buckets one two three um because i saw it on youtube and i thought it was a great idea and so i went ahead and did it but what i don't like is that you know the water in there, you have to keep dumping it over and over again because it rots if you don't. It molds. It doesn't rot. It, it molds and it stinks up really. It sucks. And it sucks to do that process of lifting the upper bucket, bucket, not bucket, uh, to dump the water on the five gallon ones. They're heavy. So I stopped doing that. Um, and, uh, and I started planting just a new regular uh, container, just a single container. So as you can see, some of these strawberries are looking pretty good. They're good size also. I put these little bags, I ordered on Amazon to protect them from the, uh, the insects and the rabbits. The rabbits can come and reach and eat this, okay? So when the rabbit comes and it sees there's a bag, it won't eat it. And uh, the insects will also eat it. The little pill bugs or, you know, just just gnats. They will eat uh, the strawberries. And the birds. The birds. My number one enemy. The birds. So, I could eat these if I want. They're a little tight. They're a little hard. So, they're fully colored. But I want them to be a little soft. Because if I eat them like that right now, they'll be good. They'll just be sour. So we want to leave them on the on the branch just a little longer. But um, these are the strawberry. And I, and I have eaten a couple already from the other plants. There's another one here. This one's not quite ready. You see that? If I wouldn't have this bag, this would be this strawberry would be full of bugs. Um, like I said, I'm doing everything container. This is a cherry tomato that's not looking too hot because we've been having really bad cold and rain. But if you can see, there's, you know, I have the little bags. There's a little cherry tomatoes coming up. And I have bigger bags, too. And there's lots more little cherry tomatoes. They're just green right now. Um, but yeah, really, really cold. And tomatoes don't like cold, so that's why it's looking kind of sad but yeah oregano you know container everything's gonna be container from now on so 
I'm going to show you how I plant this strawberry I bought. Okay. And uh, and this bucket right here. So we're going to make holes. Okay. These are pretty huge holes. So I only made three. That's good right there. If your holes are going to be smaller, you want to put more holes in just three. So let's do it. So the mix, the soil mix I'm going to use is this right here. Okay. You don't have to do it this way, but this is just how I do it and it works. And I'm trying to use, you know, the most common items that you can find, you know, at your local hardware store or Walmart, whatever. So this one right here is the raised bit mix from Kellogg's and it's pretty good. Pretty good mix. It's got, you know, uh, worm castings. It's got compost, peat moss and all the good stuff and good thing is that it's armory cider five so that's just an added bonus so we use that i have some unfinished compost it's almost finished uh from my pile and uh, we're going to use a little bit of potting mix just regular miracle grow potting mix um i am not an organic gardener i used to be for a while uh i would do organic how did that look oh. There's a little hummingbird. Um, I used to be organic or just all organic, but forget that. Like, it's just more expensive. It takes more time and it's just forget it, whatever. So I use whatever's available to me. I try to use as much as organic as I can, but if I can't find a certain item, I will use whatever I find. So being that a lot of people um, are against like miracle Grow, and if you don't want to use miracle Grow, then don't use miracle Grow. But I'm gonna use Miracle Grow putting mix. Okay, so well, we're gonna use these three, and then I'll tell you how uh, I'm gonna show you how I mix them. Okay, so I'm the ratio I'm using here for these three is two to one. So this is two parts compost, two parts raised bed mix, and one part um, peat moss or potting mix. And this was this already has the perlite in it. So peat moss is hydrophobic, which means it, it does not like to absorb water. So when I mix, if I were to just plant on a dry, like the plant on a dry piece of a cup of, uh, or bucket of peat moss, and then I watered it, the water would sit still on top for a long time before the peat moss absorbs the water. So before I mix it into these two, I'm going to moisten this water, not soak it, just moisten it. Okay, and I'm going to use some of that pond water for the ducks because it's got a little bit of nitrogen in it. And nitrogen is good for the plants because it helps with leaf growth. The poop from the birds and the from the chickens and the ducks is high in nitrogen. You want to use that in your garden, but you want to make sure it's fully composted before you use it. But the poop that's in the water of the pond is diluted with the water so it's okay so it's now moistened and we can mix it now with these two <coughs> this has been sitting there for a while so kind of kind of dried up a little bit too so okay so i got that there it's hard to do this one-handed can't find my tripod Okay, here's our mix now. All mixed up and moistened. And uh, there's a fly in there. And uh, we're gonna. And so now we're gonna put it in our bucket. Okay, something I forgot to tell you is that strawberries love a rich soil, rich in compost, right? So this is why I used to compost. And that's why that raised garden bed mixed bag is good because it has good compost if you can't get a hold of compost um as far as fertilizer i am going to add a uh, slow release fertilizer to the bucket and also um strawberries uh, in comparison to other plants like a more acidic type of soil there's a ph balance on your potting mix that you need to have most garden bed mixes have a balance pH on it so you don't have to do anything but with strawberries they like it more acidic 
on the between 5.5 and 6.5 um, and so the way to make your soil a little bit more acidic for these strawberries is putting soil acidifier okay here it is this is the one i get it is organic like i said when i try i try to get when i can i try to get organic but let me show you so what it does it, it lowers the soil ph okay so uh, honestly i you just put a little bit like a i don't know like a tablespoon or something and then mix it up it gives you the directions if you want to read it i think it does say potted plants at oh where is it where is it potted plants right here at one tea tablespoon for each for each four uh inches of pot diameter so i just put whatever anyways and uh, i don't put too much and i don't put too little i also use the espoma organic berry tone which is a fertilizer for the strawberries i bought these two at uh, the home depot and a uh, pretty reasonable price so i'm going to use both of these when as i do my lasagna layer uh, pot Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I have filled the pot almost, I've got maybe a quarter left to fill it up, and I still have some of the mitts. Um, when you take the strawberry plant out of the pot, you want to make sure that you don't bury the crown. That's the crown right there. This is the crown. You see how it's outside of the soil? Because if you bury it with the soil, it can kill the plant. So I'm going to put the plant in the middle and then cover with soil until it's high, high enough where it's covered, but it's not covering the crown of the strawberry. And I'll show you this. I came here on the, in the light because it's so, sh it's the shadow is too much over there. So I don't know if you can see it well, but here's the plant. I'm going to squeeze a little bit to the sides and then just shake it. Don't pull on this. It'll come out by itself. So you see how the crown is sticking out of the soil. The soil's not up to here. So <clears throat> let me show you what I'm. So put it in the middle. <clears throat> okay, like that. And then take the soil and just put it around. Oh, this is hard to do with one hand. Okay, so I filled it up enough to be level with the dirt that was on the plant where it's not bearing. Do you see the little growth in there? It's coming up. That would be hindered if we put the, uh, if we covered the, the crown. So 
What I'm gonna do now is make sure you, you press it lightly on the sides because we don't want no air pockets within the roots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna water it with the duck pond water, which has nitrogen in it. And, um, and we'll put some mulch. Now for mulch, I'm going to put a good pile of straw. Strawberry loves uh, a good bed of straw to to grow in, hence the name strawberries. I mean, you don't have to put straw, but that's what I do. Okay, so I have some straw here, and you want to use straw because straw is going to keep the moisture in the soil, especially in the summer. It's going to deter the bugs because it's going to be too hard for them to get in the soil. So you want to put a good one to two inches of straw. Um, let's see. One-handed. Again, it's hard. So you see how if you leave like a little bit of openings, the bugs can still come in. So you want to top it off, like legit top it off. <clears throat> Um, you can leave a little bit of opening in here where the crown is. Or you can cover it. It's, it's, the mulch can go over the crown, just the dirt can't. And if you're using straw, even better. But if you're using a heavy, heavy mulch with wood chips on it, you don't want to cover the crown then. But because uh, straw is very light and it can blow easily with the wind, you don't want to, you can do put, you can put a little bit more. So that's what we're gonna do now. So I'm gonna put my plant up here because now we're gonna trim it. And I'll tell you why. So just like every plant, um, they have their own energy. And when a plant is going to produce fruit, it spends a ton of energy making that fruit. With these plants, they're baby plants. So we want the plant to be established and strong with good amount of leaves before it starts producing um, the fruit. Growers that sell these plants put a ton of fertilizer so that it starts producing fruit right away because people don't know any better when they go buy the plant. They see little strawberries starting to form and they want to buy the plant because they say, oh, strawberries. But if a plant is starting to, in the beginning, as a small plant producing a ton of energy into that fruit, the plant, the, the, its immune system, its leaves, it's going to be weak and it's going to be it's gonna be downsized because it's trying to push out the strawberries. So once all that energy is worn out towards the, uh, it's, it's taken by the strawberries, the plant itself doesn't do very well. So you wanna trim in the early stages. Oh, forgot my trimmers. You want to trim the little baby strawberries. Um, it sucks, I know, but, um, that way the plant can produce its leaves. Remember the leaves and the, the plants are like solar panels and you want those solar panels to get as much um, energy as they can. And if it's busy, like so, giving all the energy to the flowers or to the fruit, then the solar panels are not gonna grow. So like this, this one right here has a ton of flowers. Look at that. And it has like two leaves so we don't want that there's more leaves coming up here um i think these are these are from this plant and this so it has three leaves so we're gonna cut the flowers those little strawberries from the bottom actually it's a cluster of them so let's cut them from the bottom right here okay and on this one, also, we're going to cut this cluster right here. And we're going to let this plant establish itself and grow leaves first. <clears throat> Look, it only has a couple of, a few leaves. It's, that's a very small plant. And uh, uh, I am not going to let uh, this these strawberries grow runners. That is why I don't have them in a bigger bed because 
if I let the runners go, then this plant would need more space. I'm just gonna have this, these two plants grow strawberries on their own by themselves without the runners. So this is how I plant my strawberries. And remember, you see how it's, the holes are very important, very good drainage on this pot because strawberries hate to sit on soggy soil. They'll rot quickly. So very good, very important to have um, drainage. There we go. Okay, so let's put these with the other strawberries. Now, these, there it is right there. The, um, so these strawberries, do you see this one? I let this one have its strawberries because look how lush it is with all the, the leaves, okay? So um, I allowed it to, to continue fruiting because it had a good amount of leaves. These don't have fruits yet because I'm letting them uh, leaf out first. So right now they're on full sun. They're on full sun um, because it's spring. Come summer, these plants are going to have to be in shade because here in Arizona, so in mind we, the sun is brutal and nothing can be, very few plants can tolerate the Arizona sun. So for now, we're, we just started April, so they can sit in this sun in the morning. We'll see how, uh, like I said, we've had a lot, we've had a lot of a cold front coming in with rain and really low temperatures so um, that's why they're okay but come the summer they're gonna have to be like literally in that shade right there so just wanted to make a quick just wanted to make a quick video on how I pop my strawberries I wanted to keep connecting with you guys and thank you for watching these videos i'm gonna keep up posting more videos about chickens and all these things that we're doing in the yard which by the way we have added more ducks that's caleb's toy <laughs> we've added more ducks we have two pens now and yeah i have to make a video to show you guys what we got going on with the ducks okay well thank you for watching this video and see you next time bye